How's that, Daniel? Yep. We have in the, right at the old location of the stairs, and it's sitting right there. And you're in a national park, and we have a car. We might even have, yeah. I'm hitting it. It doesn't want to stick. Uh, John Lawson, who is the general manager of this beautiful uh, boat yard, he's he uh, ironically lost his father in a boating race with six other sailors when the big storm came up, and um, when he lost his he lost his father, and his, uh, he was brought to tears inside when I told him what we were doing. Um, and he said, "Please, uh, you know." Just be respectful of everybody, but uh, you know, have at it. Um, he showed me all the maps, um, but uh, he was pretty torn up because he understands what it's like to have a family member missing. That's it. Oh yeah. So that person went off that cliff, hit that road, kept going, and ended in the water. And that was while John Lawson's been here as the general manager. He said to check this corner just in case they went off back in 78 to double check this corner. So that's what we're gonna do.
that metal right there. So it, we have to clear this area. We're in 6.8 meters of water. So we need to go along this whole ridge just in case they came down that road right there where the guardrail is, which goes all the way along that section, all the way back to the corner. It's all guardrail. And so we're double checking everything on the edge line of the road. And it takes a 90 degree turn right up here on the, on the corner. And so we want to make sure we're clear. And the road's right there. And see, they built that road back, you know, probably in the 20s or 30s when they came in. And then that guardrail was put in after. You can see the stones up in the corner. I don't know if you can see that with the camera we have. But okay, when we go around right up here, 2.3 meters of water. Again, we're in these big boulders. And, you know, you, you know it's most definitely a boulder. But with the road being right there, I mean, that rock's probably another year before right there. So it's definitely rock. It's not large enough. It's uh, less than a meter in height. So that's a rock, definitely, because it's... What'll give it away is there's like a tire straight sticking up. And the kind of things we're really looking for. Man-made straight lines and parallel lines and circles. One point one. One meter. Sun coming through the clouds. Amazing shot off the water. And we are in uh, six meters of water right off of the, this old stone edges. And I do have a, uh, I, I guess that's, the, the, I have that on that side. I see the stone in the water. Five point seven meters of water, and we are literally right here in the car park. And, you know, this would be an accident scenario, where they just drove in by accident in the dark. We went in. Now we have to see it. Five point two meters of water. Five point one. Still five meters of water right next to the car park. 4.7 meters, still never see it. And back in the day, this probably wasn't gated off. I got something here. Yeah. That's a car. Hello. How's that, Daniel? Yep. We have in the, right at the old location of the stairs, and it's sitting right there. And you're in a national park, and we have a car. We might even have, yeah. And it looks old. And it's flattened. It's, flattened. it's got a flat surface to it, front end, broken down, and I don't know, Dan. It, that that's very possible right there. Let's uh, and Dan's gonna go over it one more time. And here it comes. I mean, look at that. Look at that right there. We have a car sitting right in the water, right in the area that you would think that it would be there, and it's old too. So let's uh, get the magnet on this thing. Yep. Okay, let's pull back. So Bill, we're right off the edge of this car park here. 
What have we got? We have a car sitting in uh, 2.4 meters of water to the roof in a 4.7 meter hole. And it is, it looks like it's crushed a little bit. Like it's been there a while. Well, if a bigger boat like this has come out of the top of it, it might have squashed it down. Remember that boat that Jar uh, car that Jared found right off those docks? Yeah, it was, it was a squashed like a. Yeah, just and they wouldn't even know. It's definitely smashed. You can't tell what it is. It's so broken. But it is only. It's in 3.8 meters of water. Right here. Just trying to get a bigger picture of it so I can actually. Will you paddle on the right for me on this? So I'm gonna put the magnet down on it, Dan, and see if we can uh, get it to the point where we can see it really well. I'm right over the top of it. And I'm missing it, so I'm, I, it's actually right there. I'm hitting it, and it doesn't want to stick. This it means it's covered in barnacles. Is there any chance it's a rock? No, it's definitely not a rock. That's a car. It's a definite car. I'm getting magnetic pull, but it's covered in it's, barnacles. And it's, it's probably there. that old. It's going to be struggling to okay. stick to it. But we might get a big chunk off it, if we're lucky. Do me a favor. and Not that like that echoing noise. I'm gonna clean the magnet off, make sure I get everything off of it. I'm gonna go back to, they're not gonna leave a rock right here in the thing for one. Well, this goes back over it because it looks like we're drifting. I mean, it is such a shape of a car, but it is a, it's a rock. I'm on the back side of it now. I'm beyond it. This is at a of three meters of water. It looks like a dense car. It sounds like a rock, it looks like a big car. Crazy. I mean, it's exactly clear in each one of the channels between the boats just to make sure that there's nothing in here. To be thorough. Because Dan wants to do that so badly. He wants to go in and out six times. We got six runs to go so that we can actually clear this section and turn because we can't get by a couple of them. So we might as well just make sure we double check it. Sir. Let me just get a little bit of this. So these these are the boat ramps that are in this location at uh, where Bobbin, right? Bobbin Head. Yeah, Bobbin Head. And so he's saying that there's no possibility because the road ends up here. Let's see, that's the top one. Okay, and then it comes into here and- well, This is the building. And the building stops and nothing can get by it. Well, look, got a great big rock wall behind me. Understood. So there's no road. Um, so yeah. nothing really can get into into these sections because you can't get off from even, there. Even this section. And this was here in the 1940s. Something was here, not this specific no, it was building. all swing moorings. Got it. It was, all, it was all swing moorings in those days. So the marina started to go in about 2000. Okay. And then we put in a B arm in 2006. And also, Sorry. They went straight off that corner. That's the main road in. Yeah. And they've got an elevation here, right? So, yes. So they went straight off down and into the water there. Hmm. And then this road takes you around to Apple Tree Bay. But this corner is quite a violent corner. Under, yeah, we came down it, so. And also another one has gone off there. And so someone's gone on that road. Off on that corner as well. Got it. So we'll double check that. Just met with John Lawson, the uh, general manager of this beautiful boatyard that we're in 
here in the Karingai National Forest and at the Bobbin Head uh, boat uh, mooring location. Um, he showed me all the survey maps of the region as well as that rock on the corner that we uh, were looking at. Um, and when I told him what we were doing, um, he started to tear up. And, uh, and the reason why he started to tear up was because uh, he knows what it's like to have someone in his family missing or someone in your family missing. Uh, he lost his father in a sailing race with six other sailors. Um, Sydney to Hobart? Say again? Was it the Sydney to Hobart? It was something like that. Six sailors went down and one of them was his father. All right. And so he and his mother have been torn up about it. He literally started to tear up and had to stop in the middle of it, uh, the conversation. And he was, you know, he understands. And he, so he wanted to show me every survey map of this area yep. and show me exactly where we should look, yep. um, where cars have gone in. Um, and uh, he also showed me, he told me that a gentleman's been here for 45 years who lived here the entire time. He's not here today on, on uh, at the job site but that he wouldn't have known if a car went in here in 1978 because he was here, living yep. here. Yep. Um, the, I think the, you know, the biggest thing is that um, people really um, gravitate to this when there is a personal experience of loss. And so, you know, we're trying to find Michelle Pope and, and Stephen and, um, you know, people hear the story and they didn't even know about it. And they're from here and he looked at the newspaper article that I showed him uh, that that they possibly were buried in the Karingai forest and that they're um, that they were possibly murdered back in 1978 and he you know again almost teared up again because you know he was he, he just didn't even know that that existed and that they were that 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 this occurrence occurred so close to home uh -huh. and close to where he's been working for years so that's the story. I mean, I guess the biggest thing he said is keep on doing what you're doing. He goes, they couldn't get through there. So they couldn't get to that building. Um, if it, they're not near that rock, they're not in this section. They've surveyed it all. I've got survey maps. I show survey maps on the, on the uh, video. Um, and you can, you can see that they've done a very good, you know, very thorough measurement of every depth in here. Yeah. And if there's any um, Abnorm object or yeah. abnormality, they would have caught it because they had sonar before they put all these docks in. Yep. So, and that's so, what they should do. And every single, uh, all the the building goes down, but you can't gain access to that the, to the end of the road because the building is placed where it is. Yeah. And it was placed there in 2000, but uh, there was in 1978 there was a built another building there that you still couldn't get through that building with a vehicle to get past that. So he says, you have at it if you want to, but I'm sure that you're not going to find anything. But let's just do it for th to be thorough, just to make sure that something didn't go in and float. Yep. Um, a bigger tide. We, we have no idea what the weather was on August 25th, 1978, when they did go missing. So we're not, we're not really sure if there was a flood or anything that could have brought them, you know, further in to this bay area. Yeah. So let's have at it. All right, let's go. Story about person going off. They went off that cliff up there and ended up in the water here. So there's a cliff and there's a guardrail up there on the top. And, and so they went off that cliff, missing the turn and hit here. So, so it is possible that someone could go in and back in 78 could go in there. So let's just double check that one more time. Yeah. Yeah. So that person went off that cliff, hit that road, kept going and ended in the water. And that was while John Lawson's been here as the general manager. He said to check this corner just in case they went off back in 78 to double check this corner. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. So again, we got 10 meters of water right off that cliff. So, you know, we're gonna double check it. He came off of that up there hit the road up here at the guardrail and then came and hit this water. I think it's very deep, but you just don't know about that either. It's a cool little cave, though. Little cave. I think we got, a, I got multiple tire kind of objects on the bottom there that look like 
circular around and I've got other objects of trash as if something could be there. So we're just going another 15 meters out. So we're going to be overlapping what we just searched, but we just cuts down any uh, risk of mistakes, missing something. So yes, we're double labeling, but I'd rather do that than miss something. But as soon as you drop off that precipice, it goes into nine nine five. So we're looking at nine five on the on the screen. Look at the size of this erector set. That's a big bridge. Look at the scale. Uh, that's a cool building in the distance. What's that one? That one on the right's the. Um Casino. That's the casino. That's where we're going. That's the for Trent. I assume that's the casino that he. We've already got the one casino. Uh, I've got it marked on the map. So, so this is Sydney Harbour Bridge, people. Sydney Harbour Bridge. Really cool. Old. A lot of steel. There's the uh, upper house down there. So the casino's in the distance over there. We've got the Sydney Harbor Bridge here. It's really not the prettiest of bridges. I think they should paint it a different color. <laughs> 